Hey everybody, so today Apple released the biggest and probably most important fitness update they ever have to the Apple Watch 4 and the above, including the brand new Apple Watch Series 8. And this includes a ton of features, some of which we had known about and tested during the beta, but some of these new features like the improved Compass app with the new backtrack and waypoint feature, as well as the two new low power features that we had learned last week were coming to the Apple Watch Ultra, but evidently are also available on every Apple Watch Series 4 four and above. So today I'm gonna to go over all of these brand new fitness features on the Apple Watch, including a few bonus tips from some additional features that I recently found on this new update at the end. This is Colin Jenkins with Connect the Watts, where we cover the latest in connected fitness tech. If you like that and want to stay up to date with the latest, make sure to subscribe. So first off, let's open up the fitness app and talk about these brand new custom workout interfaces. So when you start a workout, particularly runs as these have the newest options and terms of metrics that you can now see during your workouts. But let's say you wanted to choose an outdoor run. Well, if you click the dots to the right, you'll be able to see various workout options. So you can choose a set distance mode, you can set a pacer mode, you can set the open, which is usually the standard workout, you can set a time-based workout, a calorie-based workout, or a custom-based workout that you can create on your own. And we're gonna go over some of these various types. But one of the coolest things is that you can edit each of these workout types. So let's just say we wanna edit this. We can set alerts, so it'll alert us when we're at a certain pace, or if our heart rate is in a particular heart rate zone, or we want to set a certain cadence range for ourselves. And workout views, we can edit the type of information that we see. So there are a lot of metric screens that you can choose to see information from, and you'll find that a lot of these are not enabled at first, so you have to go in here and enable them if you want to see them. And these include new metrics, which we'll talk more about, like power, your heart rate zones, stride length, ground contact time and vertical oscillation. And not only can you select which screens you would like to see in which order you'd like to see them in, but you can also edit a lot of them to see the exact data that you want. So a lot of these are customizable. Some of them like your heart rate zones aren't customizable, but it gives you a lot more options here to be able to customize the watch to how you would like it to look while you are doing a workout. Now, outside of that customization option, there is also a new type of workout mode, um, multi-sport. So instead of just being multi-sport for a triathlon, you can set up the multi-sport for a variety of different combinations. And some of these are already set up for you, but you can also create your own. Now, this is unfortunately limited to six different modalities of outdoor run, outdoor cycling, outdoor swimming, indoor running, indoor cycling, and pool swim. So it's a bit unfortunate that you can't create multi-modality workouts with all the various categories, but at least it gives you some flexibility when creating some of your sessions here. Now, going back to your heart rate zones, if you want to edit that, you can, but you'll have to go to settings and select workout and then scroll all the way to the bottom and select heart rate zones. And so usually it'll be set to automatic. So it'll just predict based on the maximum heart rate you have set on the watch, what your zone should be. Now, if you want to set this up manually, you can. And the unfortunate part about it is that you can't set your max heart rate, which I think would have made a lot more sense. Instead, you have to adjust each of these zones individually. So for example, for me, my max heart rate is around 200. I'll have to do that calculation myself and just edit each of these you know, individually so that it will make sense relative to my individual uh, numbers. Now staying in these settings, if we go to the top, you'll see the low power mode option. And this is actually a separate low power mode than just low power mode. So, and I know this can be confusing because I was confused at first when I saw this, there's actually two low power modes on the Apple Watch now. The first low power mode can be adjusted via the battery in the settings. And here is where you can set that one. And what that one does, it'll help extend the battery life from around 18 hours to 36 hours, which is great. And it does this by eliminating the always on display, no longer tracking your heart rate or your blood oxygen in the background, only checking your notifications once per hour. And it also turns off automatic workout tracking. So you'll have to start the workout yourself. Now, when you have a low power mode on and you start a workout, that low power mode essentially turns off during the duration of that workout. So all of your workout tracking and metrics will be the same as usual. However, if you scroll down on settings all the way down to workout, 
and enable that low power mode, that will enable low power mode during your workout. And this will save you some additional battery by changing how the GPS works because normally the GPS is firing as often as it can to enable the most accurate GPS possible. But if you don't need your GPS accuracy to be that precise during an outdoor workout, let's say for a walk, for example, well, you can turn this low battery mode on, then it'll save a lot of battery by not continuously pulling in that GPS information and doing it more sporadically. So just remember that there are two low battery modes. Uh, one is for the watch in general and one is for your workouts and you can have one or the other on independently of each other. So going back to the workout mode and some of the new metrics that you can see while you're running, there is a new metric called vertical oscillation, which is essentially how much up and down you are moving while you are running. Uh, there is stride length, which is essentially, you know, how big of a step or how big of a stride you are taking uh, while you are running. There's ground contact time, which shows you how long your foot is staying on the ground before you bring it back up. And then there is running power, which is a really great metric to have on a watch like this. And why running power is so useful is because let's say you're running a 10 minute per mile pace. Let's say your goal is to hold a steady state 10 minute per mile run, but then all of a sudden you find yourself running up this giant hill. Well, it can be really hard to sort of estimate how hard you should be going up that hill to give yourself the same stimulus as if you were running on a flat surface. And so running power is a metric that you can use to do that because instead of looking at your pace, it's looking at your overall power output. So if you're running a 10 minute pace on flat ground and a 10 minute pace uphill, that 10 minute pace uphill is generating a lot more power. So it's a great metric to have and a great way to see what your pace truly is so you can better guide your pace throughout your workout. Additionally, like I said, you can create workouts based on distance or time and the new pacer setup, which basically allows you to set the distance that you want to go and the pace that you want to achieve it in. And so the goal of the watch will be to alert you when you are ahead or behind that pace. So in terms of custom workouts, you just scroll all the way to the the bottom, create workout. And then from here, you can create any type of workout, but if you go all the way to custom workout, you can add a bunch of these elements in there. So for example, after a warm up, I could add a run that was based on distance. So maybe I'm gonna run, you know, 1.25 miles. Then after that, I'm going to recover, right? And that's just gonna be based on time. Okay, and then I'm going to add another run or you can add repeats and again based on time it could be open just for however long you like but you can create all these types of workouts but you can create and save a lot of these basic workouts which again is a big improvement over what used to be possible with the apple watch okay so now i also have to talk about one of the coolest features on the apple watch that was just added and that is the new compass app so this new app has a ton of cool new features one of which is that you can select to enable backtracking which basically allows to you know, if you get lost or if you just want to not have to think about the path that you took to get back to the way you came, well, you can enable that and then, then the compass will remember all the locations and the paths that you took and you can backtrack your entire workout entirely to wherever you started. Additionally, you can set waypoints throughout your workout. So if you want to remember a few different locations, you can add those waypoints to the compass and you can even color code them and change the icon associated with them. So really, really cool for hiking, trail running, and even honestly, sometimes, especially when traveling, I'll just be like running around wherever and that backtrack feature is gonna be really nice just to be able to find my way back to where I started. Now, the two additional cool things that I've discovered so far with this new update that I think are really useful uh, for fitness, one is that you can now enable screenshots on your Apple Watch, and so now I just press the two buttons together and I'm able to take a screenshot. And this is very useful during workouts because a lot of times I'll be going through a rough part or something will just get me and I'll be like, you know what, I really wanna look back to see like what happened to me here. And if I take that screenshot, I'll I'll know the exact time to look back to when I'm evaluating my overall workout data. Additionally, the focus mode that they've had on the Apple iPhone, well, that's also now enabled on the Apple Watch. So, and you can set up that focus mode for workouts in particular so that you only get you know, certain notifications or certain calls for particular people while you're working out, but not from others. So lots of customization possible here. And I think that's really one of the benefits of having an Apple Watch is having that ability to build it and customize it however you'd like with whatever 
apps you'd like and all of that. And it's always been kind of a bummer that the Apple fitness aspect of it has been pretty you know, bland and very restrictive into what you could do and customize with. And this update really goes a long way to bringing a ton of very useful fitness features uh, to the watch and not just the Apple Watch Ultra, which I'll be reviewing soon. So again, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to check that out, but to the entire Apple Watch lineup as well. Again, this is Colin with Connect the Watts. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always, and see you next time.